Devanath sir. Dr. Devanath completed his bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering from NITs. He completed his PhD from IIT Roorkee in 2015 in the field of manufacturing of composite material. He started his career as an assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering of NIT Meghalaya in 2015. He has published more than 50 manuscripts in the peer-reviewed journals. He has also contributed several chapters in different books published by internationally renowned published, namely Elsevier, Springer, Willy, Woodhead, VRG, Press, etc. He has edited one book titled Primary and Secondary Manufacturing of Polymer Matrix Composites, published by CR, CRC Press. He, uh, his current research is focused in the area of conceptualization and development of biodegradable composites and manufacturing method. He was honored with the prestigious excellent research contribution award on the occasion of Institute Day of NIT Meghalaya. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for accepting our uh, request and being here for uh, delivering the lecture. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, let, let us start the session now. Uh, thank you very much for this introduction. So, let me share my PPT. Share. Let's So, um, can you see my PPT? Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, can you check whether my slides are changing or not? Is it changing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Nice. okay. And voice is also clear, right? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Let us start now. Uh, once again, very good morning to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well in this, uh, you know, critical time of pandemic. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, organizer of this AICT sponsored hotel academic course on green technology and sustainability engineering. Okay, so it is a very important topic because sustainability, you know, uh, it is a not, not a new concept, but uh, still, uh, whether it is a design engineer or manufacturer, okay, they always focus on the sustainability. Huh. So there are many aspects of sustainability and I am going to discuss uh, this uh, one of the aspects which is the material, okay? Because uh, without green materials, okay? Or without uh, this green manufacturing, okay? Sustainability, you know, it is, it is like paralyzed, okay? So you should have a green materials and green manufacturing technique, okay? So that you can fulfill the sustainability requirements. So, in this presentation, basically, I am going to discuss about the, you can see the title of the talk, primary and secondary manufacturing of green composites. So basically, I am going to discuss about the manufacturing of green composite. So green composite, it may be for some of you, it is a new term, okay? And maybe some of you already aware of this uh, materials, green composite materials, okay? So what I will do, I will just, uh, give you a very brief idea about these uh, materials that is green composite materials then I shall discuss about their manufacturing processes again there are two types of manufacturing processes one is which call primary manufacturing processes and another secondary manufacturing process so primary manufacturing processes like you get the basic shape of the product okay like casting forming these are all primary manufacturing processes and by secondary manufacturing processes you get the you know final shape of the product like machining or joining so these are all you know secondary manufacturing processes so i'll give i'll talk i'll not talk much about the primary manufacturing process because uh, that that could be an another lecture because there are n numbers of uh, primary manufacturing processes okay and uh, we have not done any actually uh, any uh, specific research contribution in the area of primary manufacturing. We have developed some techniques, okay, but our major contribution in the area of secondary manufacturing of composite materials. So I will give you the idea, okay, maybe two, three processes I will discuss uh, how we can fabricate this material, okay, 
and I will give you the idea of the secondary manufacturing. Okay, what are the different techniques we have applied in order to improve the you know manufacturability of these uh, green composite materials? Okay, because uh, these materials, okay, these materials maybe when I have started working uh, with these materials uh, during my PhD almost one decade back. Okay, so that time people are majorly focusing on their you know. Uh, their properties, their characteristics, like their thermal properties, their mechanical properties, their physical properties. Okay, how can uh, uh, their uh, you know different properties can be improved? But now it is uh, not about only the properties. You need to improve their manufacturability also because uh, you need to make a different product by using these materials. Okay, and you need to understand what are the uh, manufacturability of these materials how can we improve the uh, you know manufacturability of these materials okay because uh, now these materials are widely used in different applications and i will show you uh, some products okay now you see these uh, materials used for making some products which are nowadays commercially available uh, in fact in automobile sector also okay so for, uh, let us start uh, uh, with the uh, concept of this green composite materials, then I shall discuss about the uh, manufacturing processes. So composite materials, I think uh, all of us we know, basically there are, are two constituents. Uh, one is called reinforcement or fiber and another is called polymer or matrix. Okay, so we combine these two materials and we finally have this composite material which are, uh, you know, superior mechanical properties. Okay as compared to its individual constituents. So again, this uh, composite material, this can be of three types, okay. If you have any questions in between, you can anytime ask me the question, okay. Or maybe you can write in the chat box if you have any question. So uh, for any question or any doubt, you can write, definitely interact, uh, okay. So basically uh, here you can see, uh, this is the composite material. And these composite materials could be of three types. One is uh, metal matrix composite, uh, ceramic matrix composite, and polymer matrix composite, depending upon the uh, types of matrix material used. Okay, if we are using a polymer as a matrix material, then my uh, composite is a polymer matrix composite. Okay, and we have our uh, we have worked with basically these polymer based composite materials. Okay, so our main contribution in the area of uh, manufacturing of polymer composite materials okay so uh, you can see this is uh, one composite that we have developed i will give you, uh, you the details in the subsequent slide how we have developed this material okay so this is one composite materials composite plates you can see we have developed by using the you know uh, fiber and the polymer okay this is again a natural fiber and polymer natural polymer okay and the resultant uh, composite is like uh, green composite material okay so uh, you can you know, now you can see this these are the some salient features of, of this composite materials so i think uh, all of us know what are the you know advantage of using these materials like they are have a very uh, you know low cost maybe not for the all types of composite like if you talk about this carbon fiber and kevlar fiber reinforced composite they are quite costly but other composite materials like glass fiber or specifically talk about the green composite materials, okay, they are quite low in cost. Uh, definitely all the composite polymer based composite material, they are light in weight. They have a very, very good specific strength and stiffness. Flexibility in design, that means you can make a very complex shapes, okay, by using this type of material. Part consolidation means you can integrate many parts together, okay and high corrosion resistance because it is a polymeric material so they have very high corrosion resistance okay so you can see the one of the major uh, this uh, characteristics uh, which is uh, very attractive is the uh, specific strength of these materials okay and if you see the specific strength of this material it is very high okay and if you compare the specific strength you can see uh, it is at the top of this graph okay this is polymer matrix composite pmc okay and if you see compare the specific strength with the conventional steel then titanium okay then titanium aluminium alloys okay it is very high metal matrix composite okay as compared to all these materials the specific strength of this polymer matrix composite is quite high okay and that's why it is you know widely used in 
different sector not uh, you, you can name any sector and you will find the application of these materials whether it is an automobile aircraft or uh, a marine or sports okay or any uh, even in construction okay in all sectors you will find the application of these materials okay but one okay uh, one uh, you can see one limiting factor one disadvantage is you can see that you cannot use this material at very high temperature applications okay so these materials you can see the temperature range may be around 200 300 or 400 degrees centigrade temperature you can use this material okay, but for high temperature application you have the different uh, materials like maybe ceramic matrix composites or other uh, high temperature uh, other materials which can sustain the high temperature okay now uh, let us try to understand what is this green composite materials so basically i can classify this uh, polymer composite into broad two categories one is synthetic composite another is natural composite okay now as i have mentioned that these composite materials have two constituents one is my fiber another is the polymer okay and these fibers could be synthetic fiber as well as natural fiber now what are the different synthetic fiber like the glass fiber carbon fiber these are all synthetic fiber kevlar fiber okay all these are synthetic fiber okay and when i am combining synthetic fiber and synthetic polymer so the resultant composite is my synthetic composite okay these are all petroleum based okay this polymer and this uh, this glass fiber carbon fiber okay so these are all synthetic material so resultant composite will be synthetic composite now if i can substitute one of the constituents okay either it is a fiber or polymer okay if i can replace the fiber or the polymer by any natural material then i call it a natural composite again it can be partially green composite and fully green composite now see the example when i am using natural fiber and synthetic polymer okay one of the constituent is natural okay one of the constituents is biodegradable in nature but another constituent it is non-biodegradable in nature so here my fiber is biodegradable in nature but my polymer is is non-biodegradable so this when i will combine these two materials then the resultant material is partially green composite but when i my both the materials okay fiber and polymer both are biodegradable in nature both you can see this is the natural fiber and this is the biodegradable polymer okay so both are naturally occurred then the resultant composite is called the fully green composite now what is this natural fiber or biodegradable polymer so there could be a, you know different types of natural fiber again there are uh, you know uh, different classification of this natural fiber majorly they they could be uh, plant based animal based or mineral based okay and this plant based fiber you can see i have highlighted few of them here like jute fiber, hemp fiber, kena fiber, flax fiber, remi fiber, sisal fiber. These are all natural fiber, natural plant fiber. And they are extracted from the different parts of the plant. Okay. So you can use like, the, the list is very huge. Okay. I have highlighted few of them here only. Okay. And these fibers you can potentially use as a reinforcement. Okay. To develop the different composite materials and the resultant composite can replace okay synthetic composites okay you can you, though there are many you know uh, uh, these uh, uh, challenges okay but uh, if you can make a good composite green composite material okay definitely you can replace uh, this synthetic composite by this natural composite okay so these are the different types of natural fiber okay you can use like uh, bamboo fiber you can use uh, pineapple leaf fiber you can use uh, this uh, cotton fiber you can use uh, then uh, banana fiber there are different types of natural fiber okay so you need to extract them from the different source of the plant okay and finally you can use them as a reinforcement at the composite material again there are different extraction techniques okay there are different methods to extract the fiber Okay, again, there are different uh, processes to improve the uh, surface characteristics of the fiber so that you can have the better bonding with the polymer. Okay, so I, I, shall, not, I, I shall not discuss all those uh, things here, okay, because we are focusing on the manufacturability of this material. 
but I am giving you the idea uh, that uh, what are the steps you need to follow to develop this type of composite material. First, you need to extract the uh, fiber from the plant. Okay, then you need to do some kind of treatment. It may be you know chemical treatment or it may be plasma treatment. Okay, in order to improve the characteristic of the fiber. Okay, then you need to you know uh, do the heat treatment of the fiber so that you can re remove the moisture and then finally you can use it for the uh, development of the green composite. Okay, so these are all natural fibers. Similarly, we can have uh, natural polymer or biodegradable polymer. Okay, so here you can see this is a biodegradable polymer. So this polymer basically again you know uh, uh, this can be uh, uh, manufactured from the different source uh, uh, like this biodegradable polymer is a PLA that is polylactic acid which is biodegradable under certain conditions okay so this is again a uh, natural polymer or biodegradable polymer so my both the constituents here is biodegradable in nature so my resultant composite is a fully green composite or green composite so here are some uh, you can see uh, synthetic fiber and natural fiber that we have worked with like we have worked with glass fiber carbon fiber these are all synthetic fiber then we have worked with sisal fiber bamboo nettle jute gravy optiva these are all natural fiber similarly we have worked with synthetic polymer like epoxy polypropylene these are all synthetic polymer again we have worked with biodegradable polymer which is pla okay so this is all about the you know green composite materials i have uh, tried to explain very briefly so that you can have an idea of this material okay now i shall discuss uh, their application so if you see the application of polymer composite okay uh, so you can see they they have already i have mentioned that you, you you name any sector you will find the application of this material okay whether it is a construction you can see that for this uh, bicycle frame then different automotive component okay aircraft turbine uh, sorry uh, this wind turbine for aircraft so in aircraft actually uh, you can see uh, more than 50 percent is advanced composite materials okay it is a big aircraft boeing uh, 777 okay 787 or 777 something like this uh, so you can see in this aircraft 50 percent material is advanced composite materials okay so why uh, advance this composite material because they have a very good mechanical properties and they are very light in weight so once i can reduce the weight i can increase the fuel efficiency okay so that is the major concern uh, in the in the aircraft or automobile industry if i can reduce the weight of the structure okay i can increase the fuel efficiency and similarly you can see uh, these the these are the application of uh, this uh, natural fiber reinforced composite material okay so this you can see there are many uh, structural as well as non-structural application of these materials you can find and some products are uh, definitely commercially available like these are all uh, made up of composite materials natural fiber reinforced uh, composite materials so this is a bio packaging product then one pavilion you can see uh, for uh, uh, architectural design then uh, this is the automotive door panel okay you can see this uh, door panel is made up of natural fiber reinforced composite and different types of you know panels okay that is based on sugar cane based uh, composite material okay so sugar cane can also be used as a fiber okay then mobile cover okay mobile shell you can see then lightweight car door then roof made from bamboo fiber reinforced composite materials you can see this is the roof okay then diaphragm then you can see uh, even in uh, automobile industry also you can see uh, so many components are manufactured by using this natural fiber reinforced you can see so this is a you know a renowned company okay mercedes so in mercedes s class you can see these are the different components so these are the different components which are manufactured by using the different types of natural fiber reinforced composite material okay so in automobile sector also now they are focusing on the using these materials because they are light in weight they have adequate strength and stiffness properties as well as okay there will be no disposal issue after the end of the you know uh, uh, service life of the product okay so you can easily you know uh, dispose it to the environment so there will be no environmental effect okay which is a major concern uh, so 
so these are the some applications there are many other application of these materials okay so now you can see there are different types of products and in order to manufacture this product you need to do different you need to perform different operation whether it is a pinning operation or joining operation or any other operation so i shall be discussing about two important uh, secondary manufacturing operation one is the machining and another is the joining so these are the two very important you know uh, uh, manufacturing operations okay and you need to perform this operation to make any type of product okay like here also you can see auto this automotive door panel there are uh, a number of holes as well as uh, you know you can see this uh, this profile okay then a big size hole okay different features are there and in order to create these features okay you need to perform the different operations okay whether it is a machining operation or for the assembly purpose you need to perform the joining operation okay so i will give about uh, give you the idea about the different uh, methods that we have applied uh, in uh, in the context of green composite materials okay uh, so we have uh, applied different machining processes as well as different joining processes so i will give you the uh, idea about the methods that we have applied maybe i will not discuss all the results okay only the major findings i will discuss okay but the major uh, focus will be on the different methods that we have applied uh, uh, for this composite materials okay for this specifically green composite material so that you can have idea about the different methods and you can also apply these methods in order to improve their manufacturability okay so so whatever uh, this uh, uh, in this presentation i am going to show you it is basically our research finding okay uh, some work done by my phd scholar and some work i am going to show which i have done during my phd okay so let us first discuss about the machining machining we know it is a very important operation okay and there are different types of machining operations like uh, drilling operation milling operation then uh, shaping operation planing then grinding so there are different types of machining operation but we have particularly focused on one type of machining operation that is drilling operation now you may ask why drilling operation drilling is a very important operation and if you see uh, the statistics so drilling itself uh, you know contributes 25 percent among all the machining operation performs in the uh, industry okay so maybe without drilling operation you cannot uh, uh, manufacture any product in aircraft automobile if you see okay uh, you need to perform this drilling operation for the assembly purpose okay uh, so i'll give you some idea huh? so you can see this is a uh, this is an aircraft wing okay where you need to create 5000 numbers of holes for the assembly purpose okay to assemble the different components of the aircraft wing this is a fighter jet where you need to make 250000 to 400000 numbers of holes okay for the assembly purpose and this is a big aircraft commercial aircraft where you need to create 1 million to 2 million numbers of holes okay for the assembly purpose so you can see okay what is the requirement of this uh, hole making operation okay it's a very important operation for the assembly purpose so here also you can see two specific example uh, related to synthetic fiber reinforced composite and natural fiber reinforced composite so this one related to synthetic fiber reinforced composite it is a, a tail section of boeing 777 it's a huge aircraft okay and here you can see uh, i have a stacking of uh, this uh, cfrp that is carbon fiber reinforced polymer which is a synthetic composite okay so i have a stacking of this uh, titanium and the uh, cfrp uh, laminate okay and you can see there are n numbers of holes you can see so many numbers you need to create for the assembly purpose okay so it is clearly visible in this tail section similarly it is a automotive door panel which is made up of natural fiber and polymer so that is a 50 percent canaf and 50 percent pp pp is polypropylene okay it, it is a synthetic polymer but you fiber you can see it is a 50 percent canaf it is a natural fiber okay here also you can see number of holes you required for the you know assembly purpose not only the hole you need to create different features okay you can see this this is one feature okay different profile okay so there is another feature so different shape are there okay so you need to make these features 
for the assembly purpose okay so that you can you know uh, fix this automotive door panel to the uh, uh, automotive structure uh, and how you can do create this hole by that drilling operation is not it so drilling is a very important operation but when we talk about drilling of composite materials it is not very conducive okay so drilling of composite materials is very challenging okay so uh, how it is challenging and why it is challenging you can see i have highlighted a few points here first is the repeat tool wear okay because when we do the drilling operation there will be a physical interaction of the cutting tool with the workpiece material and here my workpiece material is polymer composite which is having fiber and polymer and most of the fibers if you see they are abrasive in nature okay uh, if you see the synthetic fiber like glass, carbon, all these fibers are synth uh, this uh, abrasive in nature. Okay, so when there will be a physical interaction between the cutting tool and these uh, uh, fibers, okay, due to the abrasive nature of the fiber, there will be a repeat wear to the tool. Okay, that means you cannot use a tool for a long time. You need to change the tool or maybe you need to re-grind re the uh, or resharpen the uh, cutting edges of the tool okay so that is one challenge okay so this can be overcome by judiciously selecting the proper tool material okay nowadays there are different tool materials some advanced or hard materials are also there okay those can be used as a your tool material the drilling induced delamination that is another challenge okay so when you do the drilling in a composite laminate okay so then you will see this delamination and delamination is nothing but the separation of the uh, you know uh, plies okay or separation of the uh, fiber layers okay and that is one of the you know major issue when you go, go for drilling of this composite laminates okay and again this could be of peel up and push out type so here you can see uh, this is a peel up type delamination and this is a push out type delamination and in both this type of delamination you will see the separation of the layers okay so uh, peel up basically you will observe at the uh, at the entry side of the hole okay when drill bit is entering into the laminate and push out you will see at the exit side of the hole that is when drill bit is coming out from the other side of the composite laminate Okay, in both cases you will have the separation of the fiber layers and this is called the delamination and this push out delamination is more dangerous as compared to the peel up delamination okay and this causes 60 percent rejection in the aircraft industry so if you make 100 holes 60 holes will get rejected because of this push out delamination so you can understand okay it, it is a big challenge from the manufacturing point of view so we need to uh, you know find an alternative solution to address this issue then there are other types of damages like fiber pull out matrix burning okay due to high temperature generation yes chipping and spoiling other mode of damages then heat build up due to the low thermal conductivity of the composite constituent so we have the composite constituents like fibers and polymers okay if you see the thermal conductivity of both the fibers and polymers they are quite low okay so what will happen when we will do the drilling operation due to physical interaction of the cutting tool with the composite laminate there will be a temperature generation okay in case of metals and alloys most of the temperature is carried away by the chip maybe around 75 percent of the total heat carried away by the chip okay and remaining uh, amount of heat is uh, transferred to the cutting tool and the workpiece material okay but here if if you see that the uh, due to the low thermal conductivity of this uh, composite materials okay the heat that will generate it will mostly concentrated on the you know cutting tool and it will have a detrimental effect on the life of the tool okay Temperature during cutting causes material disintegration and clogging of the tool. That is another issue because of the high temperature generation. Okay, material may disintegrate and there may be a clogging of the tool. 
So material disintegration will occur when you are using a thermosetting polymer. Uh, and you know that these polymers are very uh, sensitive to the temperature. And if there is a high temperature generation, definitely material will disintegrate. Their uh, uh, structure will ch <coughs> change, physical properties will change, and finally it will disintegrate. Or it, if it is a thermoplastic polymer, there will be a clogging to the tool. So I hope you, you know what is the difference between thermosetting and thermoplastic polymer. Um, there are two types of polymers. Uh, and if you see, if I uh, would like to explain this thermosetting polymer, it is like, you know, uh, it is like egg. Okay, once you, uh, you boil it, okay, uh, it will not come, you cannot bring it to the, uh, uh, you know, initial state. Okay, it becomes solid once you boil it. Okay, the egg becomes solid. Okay, but if you have wax and if you, uh, you know, increase the temperature, it will melt. Okay, and uh, uh, and uh, in room temperature, it will become solid. Again, you heat it, it will melt. Again, in room temperature, it will become solid. So similarly, uh, first example is related to the thermosetting polymer. Okay, once it gets cured, it becomes solid. And the second example is related to the thermoplastic polymer. So there are such polymer, you can, again, uh, if you uh, reheat, okay, it will melt. Okay, if you uh, uh, if you again what is called if you uh, decrease the temperature, okay, or if you keep it at room temperature, it will get solidified. Again, you apply heat, it will melt. Again, if you uh, uh, keep it for, uh, at room temperature, then it will become solid. Okay, so this thermoplastic polymers uh, due to high temperature generation, this may uh, clog the tool. Difficult to attain dimensional accuracy because of differences in coefficient of thermal expansion in the matrix and fibers okay so these matrix and fibers they have the different you know uh, coefficient of thermal expansion because they are the two different materials and they are physical properties mechanical properties their thermal properties all different uh, so it is difficult to attain the dimensional accuracy okay because uh, due to temperature generation they will uh, behave differently okay their response will be different and due to that it is difficult to attain the desired dimensional accuracy. Difficult to attain smooth edges as fiber absorb cutting energy. That is another issue. Okay, there are some fibers which absorb the cutting energy uh, during the machining operation. So if they absorb the cutting energy, then there will be no smooth cutting of the fiber. Okay, for example, Kevlar fiber, they have very high tendency to absorb the cutting energy. Okay, so if you try to machine, uh, this type of composite material having uh, Kepler fiber, you will see uh, 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 you, you cannot cut them properly. Okay, there will be no smooth cutting of the fiber. Okay, as they are absorbing the cutting energy. So these are the some uh, challenges. Okay, you will face when you go for uh, drilling of this or machining of these uh, composite materials. Okay, so how can we overcome these uh, problems? There are many ways to do it. Okay. So first one is the drill geometry, like uh, I can optimize the, uh, you know, uh, uh, drill geometry. So you can see there are different types of drill bits. Uh, okay, maybe we know only the twist drill bit, which we commonly used. But for composite materials, you will see there are many dedicated tools have been developed, okay, uh, for this composite material in order to make, uh, in order to make good quality holes, okay. So you can see this is a parabolic drill, then eight facet drill, four facet drill, okay, step drill, dagger drill, slot drill, core drill, tripping tool, U-shaped tool. So there you can see there are, I have given only few examples, there are many more. And if you see the geometry of these tools, they are, uh, you know, uh, quite different. Okay, some have a pointed, you know, uh, you can see this one is having a very low uh, point angle. Okay, it is quite pointed. Okay, and if you see the tripping tool, it is a different geometry, it is a hollow tool. Okay, U-shaped tool, it is again uh, have a different geometry. Again, it is a hollow tool. Okay, these eight facet, four facet and step, you can see these are the multi-facet drill points. Huh. So different drill geometry have been developed in order to improve the, you know, uh, hole making performance in this type of composite material. We have also developed a, a drill bit, okay, uh, that I'll show you in the in the subsequent slide and uh, what are the results we have uh, obtained that also I'll show you. We have found very encouraging results. Okay, when we have used that uh, drill bit 
for making hole in the composite materials. Okay, so real geometry is a very important parameter. Okay, we can uh, <coughs> develop a tool having the different geometry. Okay, and you can check the performance of, of that particular drill bit for making hole in the composite material. Then drill material, uh, I already discussed that there are different drill materials nowadays available. Okay, you can use the different tool materials like you can use the cemented carbide, very hard in nature. Then you can use coated uh, uh, drill bit like titanium nitrate coated drill bit and HSS is a common drill bit. Okay, uh, so there are different types of tool materials nowadays available and you can, depending upon the material, depending upon your requirement, you can judiciously select one uh, tool material. Okay, then cutting parameters for a drilling operation, uh, there are cutting speed and feed. Okay, axial feed of the drill bit and rotational speed of the drill bit. Okay, so these are the two cutting parameters and you need to optimize these two parameters as these will affect the cutting force generation. Okay, then high speed drilling, uh, that is another approach like uh, if, if you do the drilling operation at very high speed, at very high, high RPM like maybe 20,000 RPM or 30,000 RPM. Then also you can improve the uh, quality of the hole. Okay, then orbital drilling, that is another approach. Like my drill bit will rotate orbitally during the drilling operation. Okay, by that way also you can create a very good quality hole. Vibration assisted drilling, that is another approach. That means my tool will vibrate in its axial feed direction when you do the drilling operation. Okay. So this also gives the you know better results in terms of quality of the hole because it reduces the average cutting forces. Okay, because if I can reduce the forces, I can improve the quality of the hole. Okay, so uh, there's a direct relationship you can say. Okay, if the minimum is the force, better is the quality of the hole. Then unconventional drilling, that is the uh, now people are focusing on unconventional drilling of these composite materials. Okay, there are different unconventional techniques like uh, you can use ultrasonic machining, then electrical discharge machining, water jet machining, laser beam machining. Okay, so all these techniques you can try for this type of composite materials. The cryogenic drilling, we know that uh, uh, that cryogenic condition is a is a, uh, basically it is a very at a very low temperature. Okay, you do the machining operation. Okay, and that is called the cryogenic drilling operation. Okay, so at a cryogenic condition, material behavior or material response is different okay so that we also uh, we, we can improve the drilling performance of the material because material will behave in a different way at cryogenic condition then drilling with pilot hole that is another approach uh, like uh, suppose you want to make a hole of 10 millimeter in diameter so first what you do you create a hole uh, for example 5 millimeter a small size hole you first create and then you take uh, another drill bit uh, of desired diameter and you enlarge that hole that you have already created okay that means in two steps you are doing the drilling operation first you are creating a small hole and then you are enlarging that hole you have already created okay so this is, that is called drilling with pilot hole then backup support so that is another approach like uh, this is this this one you can see here okay so this is with support this is without support so when you do try to do the drilling operation in a composite plate without support so you can see uh, there will be a bending to this plate okay there will be a tendency uh, to bend this plate okay due to the force that will generate during the drilling operation okay so due, uh, due to that there will be a lots of damage but if you have a support this type of support okay then there will be no bending and you can avoid the damages that that will produce during the drilling operation so backup support also you can try then lowering the feed rate at the time of exit okay that means you need to control the feed okay so that may be not possible with the conventional machine tools so uh, but if you can control the feed rate at the time of exit because uh, i have shown you that when the drill bit is coming out uh, uh, from the uh, other uh, side of the composite plate then you have the maximum damage which is called the uh, push out delamination okay and that is uh, th that is uh, uh, also affected by the feed rate okay because the fourth generation uh, have direct relation with the feed rate if the feed rate is more there will be more fourth generation and due to that there will be more damage so if i can reduce the feed then the there will be minimum fourth generation and there will be minimum damage 
so that's why lowering the feed rate at the time of exit also helps to improve the quality of the hole so these are the some approaches there are many more that you can try to improve the uh, you know hole making performance of this type of composite material now i shall show you what are the different uh, techniques that we have applied uh, so first technique that we have applied is a very common technique that is a conventional drilling technique okay so in this technique uh, we have used uh, three different drill point geometries you can see this is a four facet this a is a four facet b is a parabolic drill point geometry and c is a step drill point geometry so you can see from this images that the uh, design and construction of these drill point geometries are quite different okay so we have uh, investigated how this uh, drill geometry affecting the hole making performance of this composite material so here we have used a natural fiber reinforced composite materials we have two different types of natural fiber reinforced composite materials here one is one is my uh, thermo setting based composite materials another is uh, thermoplastic based composite materials okay so uh, so in this process uh, we have uh, considered three parameters one is my drill point geometry so we have three different types of drill, drill point geometries here another parameter is the feed another parameter is the speed so these are the cutting parameters feed and speed okay so we can see the range of feed and speed that we have considered okay so we have considered different range of feed and different range of speeds okay and I have another parameter which is my drill point geometry so I have basically three input parameters and drill bit diameter you have considered here is the 8 millimeter and drill material is a solid carbide which is very hard okay because uh, uh, so that we can uh, you know inc uh, increase the life of the tool we no need to change the tool again and again okay so that's why we have considered very hard material which is solid carbide now you can see here uh, uh, some sort of signals so these are basically you know force signals okay so during drilling operation you have two types of forces one is thrust force another is torque okay so these red signals you can see here these are all thrust force signals and blue signals are torque signals okay and figure a b c basically these obtained with the three different types of drill point geometries like figure a obtained by parabolic drill point geometry figure b with the four facet drill point geometry and figure c with the strap drill point geometry uh, speed and feed is constant here 900 rpm and 0 0.05 millimeter per regulation and material is sizzle epoxy so basically this is my fiber is here natural fiber and polymer is the synthetic polymer so it is a partially green composite materials okay so uh, you can see the response of these signals okay so they have the different resp responses with respect to the different tools okay so this is the thrust force signals for the parabolic drill point geometry you can see it is maximum maybe around 75 something like this uh, then for the uh, four facet it is more than 100 and for the uh, uh, what is called step drill geometry it is close to 240 newton okay so what we have observed that this parabolic drill point geometry okay which is having this pointed you can see this is having the pointed uh, 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 what is called these uh, cutting edges okay so if you see the end of this drill bit okay it is quite pointed okay so this pointed uh, drill bit gives me the better results okay in terms of minimum thrust force and torque okay torque is also minimum with this uh, parabolic drill point geometry okay and maximum is the step with the step drill point geometry so i can conclude that this parabolic drill point geometry gives me the better results when i make hole in this sizzle epoxy composite laminate okay but we have used this same drill point geometries for making hole in synthetic fiber reinforced composite materials like glass fiber reinforced composite materials okay and what we have observed that this step drill point geometry gives me the better result okay so you can see different for different materials my drill geometry 
is different. Optimum drill point geometry is different. Okay. For natural fiber reinforced composite, one particular drill bit is giving me the better result. But for the synthetic fiber reinforced composite materials, another particular drill bit is giving me the better result. Okay. That is only because of the reason that they are the characteristics of the material is very different from natural fiber reinforced composite to synthetic fiber reinforced composite material. Okay. And depending upon this, you need to optimize the drill point geometry. Okay, depending upon the behavior of the material, you need to optimize the uh, what is called uh, uh, geometry of the drill bit. Okay, so here we have not only uh, analyzed the signals, also we have tried to uh, you know uh, correlate the signals with the uh, uh, physical stages of the drilling cycle. So we have uh, divided the drilling cycle, complete drilling cycle, into five stages like A to B. B to C, C to D, D to E, E to F. So A to B is called the pre-drilling stage. That means in this stage, my drill bit is rotating, but it is not cutting the composite material. That means it is not in contact with the composite plate. Okay. B to C is called the indentation stage. So this is B, this is this is B, this is C. Okay. So in this stage, what happens? This you know. Uh, uh, this point of the drill bit or which we call the chisel edge of the drill bit it comes in contact with the composite plates and you can see there is a sudden increase in the thrust force okay so uh, you can see b to c okay suddenly my thrust force is increasing with no time okay so this stage is called indentation stage so then c to d what is c to d c to d is called the cutting stage because in this stage, complete engagement of the cutting edges of the drill bit with the composite plate will take place. Okay. And the material will remove in this stage only because there is a complete engagement of the cutting tool with the composite plate. Okay. So, maximum material is removed in this uh, stage, which is called the cutting stage, that is point C to D. D to E is called the reaming stage, R E A M I N G, reaming. Okay. So basically what happens, my process, you can see it gradually dies down because uh, my drill bit is exiting from the composite plate. That means there is no cutting action by the drill bit. Okay. And finally E2F, uh, that means uh, the drilling operation is completed, but your drill bit is still rotating because you can see the drill bit come out from the composite plate in this stage, but my drill bit is still rotating. So that's why. Uh, my thrust force is minimum in this stage. Okay, so these are the different stages of the drilling operation that we have tried to correlate with the signals of the forces. Okay, so this is the thrust force signals, and these signals we are recorded by using the dynamometer, force dynamometer. Okay, and then we have used uh, uh, software to analyze these signals to find the maximum values and average values of the thrust force and torque. And you can basically uh, analyze many things uh, by uh, capturing these four signals. Okay, so this is how we have recorded the signals, and we have analyzed the signals, and then we have correlated these signals with the, uh, different stages of the uh, drilling cycles. Then we have investigated the characteristics of the form chips because we know that during the machining operation, the material is removed due by uh, due to the formation of the chips. Okay, so. We have considered two different materials, as I have mentioned earlier. We have co considered thermoplastic composite here and thermosetting composite. Fiber is common, which is a sigil fiber, natural fiber, but polymers are different. One is thermoplastic polymer, another is thermosetting polymer. So, thermosetting polymer we have used here is the epoxy, and thermoplastic polymer we have used is the polypropylene. Okay, so we have two different materials sigil polypropylene and sigil epoxy. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, these are the uh, uh, different uh, types of chips that we have uh, collected during the drilling operation. So, figure A to C, that this is basically figure A, B, C. This is for basically uh, uh, thermoplastic based composite material that is my sigil polypropylene. And D, E, F, that is for thermosetting based composite material that is sigil epoxy. Now, if you see the characteristics of the, this chip, these are different. 
okay in terms of shapes or you can say that size size and shapes okay so we have uh, actually collected these chips at the different combination of uh, cutting velocity and the feed okay so if you see if my cutting velocity is decreasing okay here it is 70 meter per minute here 45 meter per minute and here 23 meter per minute okay if my cutting velocity is decreasing gradually the size of the chip increasing okay i i, I am getting more and more continuous type of chips okay but at the same time i am what i am decreasing the feed also sorry i am increasing the feed so here it is 0 0.05 millimeter per revolution and here it is 0 0.12 okay so here it is 0 0.3 millimeter per revolution okay so when i am increasing the feed what happens my thickness of the chip is also increasing okay so here also you can see for the thermoplast uh, so for the thermosetting based composite materials also when i am decreasing the uh, uh, cutting velocity and increasing the feed, uh, I am getting uh, uh, you know uh, 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 different types of chip. Okay, and size is quite uh, uh, you know big as compared to the uh, chips that obtain at the cutting at a low velocity of uh, feed and higher velocity of uh, cutting speed, cutting velocity. Okay, but uh, you can also observe that for the thermoplastic based composite materials. Okay the size of the chip is long as compared to the thermosetting based composite material because this epoxy it is quite br brittle in nature so when uh, when uh, you will do the machining operation okay it will fracture early because of uh, you know high strain rates because of the induction of the high strain rates okay and that's why you have mostly this uh, powder like chips when you do the uh, machining of this thermosetting based composite materials but for thermoplastic it is mostly like continuous and curling type of chip because there will be a large plastic deformation okay because uh, of the uh, you know uh, different behavior of this thermoplastic polymer and one particular condition you can see uh, we have obtained this ring type of chip you can see that uh, shape of the chip it is like a ring type okay and what is that condition we have obtained this uh, when we have used this uh, you know uh, step drill point geometry at a low speed and feed value okay and when we have done we have done the drilling operation in scissor epoxy laminate so in this particular condition only we have obtained these ring type of chips otherwise uh, for the different drill point geometry okay the characteristics of the form chips under uh, uh, certain value of speed and feed is same okay there is not much variation in the characteristics of the form chip but only in this condition we have obtained this ring type of chips at low feed low speed using the step drill point geometry and when my uh, work material is uh, scissor epoxy that is a thermosetting based composite materials okay and these are some uh, you know uh, maybe very briefly i will explain to you what are these graphs this is the actually response of the uh, thrust force and torque with respect to different parameters we have considered like uh, drill point geometry then spindle speed and feed rate so what we have observed if you see here uh, when i increase the spindle speed the tendency of the thrust force is uh, uh, it, it is decreasing okay it, it tends to decrease okay because with an increase in the spindle speed from 900 to 2800 rpm what will happen there will be more interaction between the uh, uh, what is called uh, cutting edges of the drill bit with the uh, composite plate okay that means there will be more friction friction and due to the more friction there will be more heat generation and due to more heat generation polymer will get softened okay because at high temperature polymers may soften okay and due to the softening of the polymer uh, my forces will reduce okay but when i increase the feed okay my thrust force and torque increases why because when i increase the feed my undeformed uh, uh, undeformed chip thickness will increase okay and due to that uh, i need to exert more amount of force to remove the material okay so this is the like a general trend you can uh, 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 you can obtain for me uh, for machining of this type of materials okay so it's a general trend you can have uh, this trend for uh, machining of any types of material 
because when you increase the feed, my undeformed car cheapness increases, so my uh, force requirement will also increase. Okay, my power requirement will also increase to remove the material. But when I increase the speed due to high temperature regeneration, okay, material may soften, and due to that, you need to uh, exert less amount of force to remove the material. Okay, that means your power requirement will reduce. Okay, so this is, these are the general trends, and this is the you know morphology of the machine surface. So you can see here, uh, uh, this is for the this figure A and B. That is for the scissor epoxy, uh, scissor uh, that is a thermoplastic based uh, thermosetting based composite material, and C to D is a thermoplastic based composite material. So you can see from this. Uh, uh, micrographic images that uh, damage in the you know uh, this thermosetting composite it is more as compared to the thermoplastic based composite materials so you can see there are lots of uncut fiber here in this portion you can see lots of uncut fiber then bending of the fiber you also observe then debonding also you see there is fiber matrix debonding okay so these are the you know uh, 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 common modes of damages that we'll observe when you do the machining of uh, these materials, like fiber pull out, debonding, overhanging of the fiber, bending of protruded fibers. Okay, when I uh, make hole in this thermosetting polymer based composite material, but for thermoplastic based composite materials, you can see uh, the amount of damage is comparatively less. Okay. Because you can see here, uh, mostly it is like protrusion of fibers, formation of recast layer, and smearing of polymer. Okay, uh, so in uh, some extent, actually, it helps uh, this uh, formation of recast layer and smearing of polymer because when there will be smearing or formation of recast layer, basically it is covering the uh, fiber tip. Okay, so uh, so there will be no detrimental effect because of this. Okay. So it is basically improving the, uh, the you know uh, quality of the machine surface. Okay, so these are the surfaces that you will obtain when you uh, go for machining of these materials. And I have mentioned earlier that we have developed a tool for making hole in this type of green composite materials, and this is the tool basically uh, that we have developed. Okay, so you can see uh, this tool is completely different. Uh, this is a hollow tool. Okay. And it has two sharp cutting edges at the periphery of the tool. Okay, and we have compared the performance of this tool that we have developed with the conventional twist drill bit. So these are the different angles and different parameters of the uh, you can see uh, of this uh, developed tool. Uh, so here are you can see different angles. Okay, uh, so you can further optimize these angles to in, in order to improve the you know performance of this tool. So this uh, this tool you can see we have uh, again uh, uh, recorded the thrust force and torque signal for this both the drill bits that uh, the developed drill bit as well as the twist drill bit and we have done the comparison. So you can see for this developed drill bit the thrust force signal it is completely different. Okay, this is for the twist drill bit this uh, thrust force and this is torque and this thrust force is for the developed drill bit and this torque is for the developed drill bit. But if you see the nature and or the behavior of the uh, force signals, okay, this is completely different for this uh, drill bit that we have developed as compared to the twist drill bit. Because here the material removal mechanism is different. Material removal mechanism in the sense if you see the chip that is formed, okay, uh, during the uh, drilling operation by this developed tool point geometry, most of the materials come out in the form of cut out slug and a small amount of material is removed in the form of chip okay but in case of twist drill bit okay if you do the drilling operation you will see the uh, material is removed only in the form of chip okay so you can see there is a different uh, uh, you know uh, uh, mechanism of material removal with this developed drill point geometries okay and what we have observed these results are very uh, uh, you know uh, encouraging because if you see the thrust force and torque value, there is a significant reduction in the force values. Okay, this is for the twist drill bit, you can see, and this is for the, uh, you know, developed drill bit. Okay, so thrust force, if you see, if I consider it is around 15 Newton and this is around 90 Newton. Okay, 
so almost six times reduction in the thrust force similarly torque also you can see it is at least 50 percent reduction in the torque values so there is a significant reduction in the thrust force and torque values okay so you can see from the signals also you can uh, observe okay so this is uh, uh, for the twist drill bit this is the thrust force signal and for the developed drill bit you can see the thrust force signals okay so you can see the maximum range from this uh, force signals okay similarly this is for the torque okay for the developed drill bit and this is for the twist drill bit so there is a significant reduction in the thrust force and torque values and I, already i have mentioned that if i can reduce the drilling induced forces i can improve the quality of the drill hole so here you can see this is the hole that we have created by using the developed drill bit and this is the hole created by the twist drill bit so this is with the twist drill bit this is with the developed drill bit okay this is the you know just images captured using the uh, camera digital camera okay and you can see that the periphery of the uh, hole you can see this is a smooth cutting okay there is a uh, there is no peripheral damage to the hole but in case of twist drill bit you can see there are lots of damages uncut fibers or protrusion of the fibers okay many more damages okay but in case of developed drill bit you cannot see any uncut fiber or any you know uh, any other types of damages okay uh, from the peripheral surface similarly that is another material this is one material and that is another material both natural fiber reinforced composite uh, that is basically uh, partially green composite because here my fiber is sisal and nickel okay these both are natural fibers sisal and nickel but my polymer is epoxy which is uh, non biodegradable in nature that is a synthetic polymer so that's why my uh, material is partially green composite so two different types of materials uh, we have used here and we have seen that by using this type of tool you can significantly improve the quality of the drill bit okay and this is the you know again we have done the uh, morphological analysis of the machine surface okay uh, we have captured this image using the scanning electron microscope okay in order to understand uh, what are the different modes of damages okay what are the uh, uh, failure in the uh, uh, failure of the composite uh, constituents in the machine tool okay and we have observed that in case of this developed drill bit okay that uh, damages is comparatively less okay like debonding okay uncut fiber okay then uh, protrusion of fiber this type of damages are comparatively less when we have used this uh, developed drill bit also we have uh, measured the temperature that generates during the drilling operation okay so basically it gives me the you know uh, uh, idea about uh, uh, how the temperature affecting the drilling performance so what actually we have done here we have used a thermal imaging camera okay so it will it will give you a, a you know a, a idea okay it will it may not give you the very exact value of the temperature that is generating in the machining tool but it will give you the idea about uh, uh, where the temperature is generating and what is the range of temperature okay so you have, you we have used a thermal imaging camera and these thermograms we have captured during the drilling operation at the different stages of drilling operation okay like i have mentioned earlier also there are uh, five different stages okay so stage one to two two to three three to four four to five five to six so there are five stages okay and in each stages we have captured the uh, what is called uh, uh, temperature that is generated in the machining tool okay and we have correlated this with the you know different stages of drilling operation and we have observed that during the uh, you know cutting and rimming stages the temperature generation is more okay because the complete engagement of the cutting tool with the uh, composite take place during the cutting stage okay so therefore there will be a more heat generation and also we have correlated how this temperature is affecting the you know mechanical damages uh, that occur during the drilling operation okay so you can see here um, that we have used five different drill point geometries here four facet eight facet step dagger parabolic five different drill point geometries and my composite material is again here uh, it is a fully green composite materials 
okay so here you can see different types of uh, uh, you know hole created by the different types of drill bits and what we have observed the step drill point geometry with the step drill point geometry we have the maximum damage in the hole that earlier also i have discussed okay and that is another reason of this uh, you know damage is the temperature high temperature generation okay which is more than 162 degree centigrade okay and due to high temperature generation what will happen uh, there will be a excessive you know uh, softening or melting of the polymer okay and due to that okay polymer cannot support this uh, forces that will generate okay that means what uh, the polymer cannot support the fiber so what will happen uh, due to uh, reduction in the shear modulus of the fiber and polymer okay there will be no smooth cutting of the fiber and polymer okay and due to that you can see there is a lots of damages in and around the drill hole when we have used this step drill point geometry but for eight facet like multi facet drill point geometry you can see that the damage to the hole is comparatively less okay this is again uh, this uh, temperature that i have mentioned how uh, 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 we have correlated with the different stages of drilling operation okay at what stages what is the temperature generation okay so so i have discussed the first part of my uh, presentation that is the machining now i shall discuss the joining behavior of the green composite materials okay Now, joining as we know, it is an again very important operation. And first part that I have discussed, uh, hole making operation, it is also related to joining. Because we create the hole basically mostly for the purpose of assembly. Okay. By creating hole, we install, uh, you know, the mechanical fastener. Okay. In order to join the different components composite components okay so first half is related to the second uh, part of this stock okay so if i can improve the quality of the hole definitely uh, my joining performance will also improve okay if there is a less damage to the hole uh, definitely the my joint efficiency will increase okay when i will install this mechanical fastener and this can be anything like it can be nut and bolt, it may be rivet, or it may be screw, or it may be any other type of mechanical fastener. Okay, so this joining behavior of composite materials, uh, here we have used the completely uh, green composite materials, that is fully green composite materials that we have developed, and we have investigated their joining behavior. So we have applied five, six different joining techniques to investigate the joining behavior of composite materials. And this work is done by one of my PhD scholar who has already defended thesis. Okay, so this is done by uh, the scholar. <coughs> one second. Okay, so, so this is uh, done by one of my scholar who has uh, defended the thesis this year. So we have applied five, six different joining techniques. And first technique that we have applied is the mechanical joining techniques. Okay. So it's an important joining techniques. Oh. So you'll see in the uh, aircraft or automobile industry also, I have given you some example where I have shown you the tail section of the Boeing 777 and then uh, automotive door panel. Okay. Uh, where I have shown that a number of holes have been created uh, for the assembly purpose. And that is mostly for the mechanical joining purpose. Okay. So First, we shall discuss the mechanical joining of joining behavior of this green composite. Basically, uh, we have developed our own material. Uh, we have developed this uh, uh, by using the compression molding setup. Okay, we have developed our own compression molding setup, and that compression molding setup we have used for uh, fabricating these green composite materials. So, uh, how we have fabricated these green composite materials? So, you can see here. Uh, this is a polymer, biodegradable polymer, that is polylactic acid. Okay, so it is available in uh, pellet form or granule form. Okay, so you can see these are the small, small granules or pellets. Okay, so these are commercially available. 
So we have used the biodegradable polymer, and this is a you can see fiber. So this fiber is in matte form. Okay, that is in open matte form. That means my fibers are oriented in uh, zero degree and uh, ninety degree directions. Okay, uh, so you can see uh, in both direction fibers are available. Okay, so this is called the open mat. So we have used this bamboo fiber and polylactic acid. So both are biodegradable in nature. So the resultant composite material is fully green composite material. Okay. So what we have done first, we have converted these PLA pellets into PLA film by using the compression molding. So we have applied the required amount of compression pressure and temperature. Okay, so that we can uh, convert this PLA pellets into PLA film. Oh. Then what we have done, we have created five numbers of PLA film, and we have taken four numbers of this bamboo fiber mat, and then we have stacked alternative alternatively in the uh, mold. Okay, we have stacked alternatively this PLA film and the open fiber mat in the compression mold. Okay, first we have placed this PLA film, then we have placed this open fiber mat, then PLA film, then again open fiber mat. Like this way, we have stacked it. Okay, then again we have applied the required amount of pressure and temperature. Okay, so temperature that we have applied is 180 degrees centigrade and pressure 6 megapascal. So, what will happen at this temperature, the polymer will melt, okay, and it will impregnate into the uh, fiber. Uh, open fiber mat and upon cooling it will get solidified and it, it will get the composite plate okay so the composite plate that we have fabricated it is three millimeter in thickness and fiber weight fraction we have considered is 30.3 percent okay and this is the pla properties like density glass transition temperature and the melting temperature you can see so if you see the temperature of compression molding uh, during the compression molding we have considered it is higher than the melting temperature of the PLA because we want to melt the polymer so that it can easily impregnate the uh, open fiber mat okay and there will be a better consolidation of the uh, composite plate okay so this is the composite plate we have created then we have prepared our specimens so these are the specimens you can see specific specimens having different width okay and as i have mentioned this is a mechanical joining technique so first you need to create the hole so creating a good quality hole again is a challenge and we have considered the different parameters so that we can create good quality holes in this composite material so already i have discussed that how uh, the different drill point geometry feed and speed all these will affect the you know uh, 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 a hole making performance of this composite materials okay so i will not repeat this part again okay so we have created hole by using the different drill point geometry and uh, considering different level of feed and speed and then we have find the optimum uh, parameter okay what should be the uh, drill geometry what should be the level of feed what should be the level of speed and by considering the optimum parameter this because this optimum parameter giving me the best result in terms of hole quality so by considering the optimum parameter we have created hole for the purpose of mechanical joining okay and this is the typical joint that we have uh, created in order to investigate the joining behavior of this green composite material so you can see this is the joint this is a schematic diagram so this is called a single lap joint Okay, so I have two composite specimen here. You can see this is one composite specimen. Okay, this is one and that is another composite specimen. Two composite specimen like this specimen. Okay, so these are the two composite specimen. One is overlapping on another. Okay, so this is the overlapping area because this portion is overlap. Okay, this is the overlapping area you can see. Okay. So uh, this is the length, overlapping length is 50 millimeter and the whole area is called, this This is called the overlapping area. Okay, then we have created a hole at the center of this overlapping area. Okay, and then finally we have installed this nut and bolt. So we have considered three joining parameters here. 
what are these three parameters one is my width of the specimen so we have considered different width of the specimen you can see these are the different widths of the specimen that we have considered another parameter we have considered is the whole edge distance that is denoted by small e what is this edge distance this is the distance from the center of the hole to the overlapping edge so you can see this is the edge overlapping edge and this is the center hole center so this distance is called the uh, hole edge distance and another parameter we have considered is the bolt fastening torque because when you install this nut and bolt you need to apply torque for the purpose of tightening okay so what should be that torque okay because it should not be too high it should not be too low if it is too high and too low it will have the detrimental effect on the joint performance okay so you need to optimize this bolt fastening torque so i have three input parameters here so bolt fastening torque that we have considered 10 15 and 20 then e by d ratio so e is the edge distance already i have mentioned and d is the diameter of the hole which is constant so diameter of the hole i think here it is uh, four millimeter or eight millimeter something like this okay so these values are not here i think okay anyway it may be four or eight millimeter okay so this ratio you can easily calculate and then w by d we have considered different uh, width of the specimen as i have mentioned and finally we got this ratio w by so these three parameters we have considered and you may ask the why these values 2.5 3.254 so these are based on some you know uh, theoretical calculations okay what should be the value of w by d what is the uh, uh, value of e by d okay so these are based on some calculations and finally we have evaluated the performance of this joint by performing two types of tests one is tensile another is compression test okay by using the universal testing machine so you can see this is the joint specimen okay which is fixed in the uh, jaws of the universal testing machine okay and this is the overlapping area which is clearly visible here okay so you can easily do the tensile testing but for compression testing you need to develop a fixture because for this flat specimen you may not perform the compression testing in the universal testing machine okay so you need to create a fixture so for that purpose we have developed this fixture we have designed and developed this fixture and finally we have used this fixture for um, uh, performing compression testing of the joint specimen so two types of testings we have performed compression and tension tensile testing in order to evaluate the uh, uh, joint performance and that has been uh, evaluated by calculating the uh, tensile failure load and the compression failure load okay so these are the different parameters of the nut and bolt that we have uh, considered for the joining purpose and this is the bolt fastening torque device that we have developed okay so this is a uh, device that we had to develop we have developed the fixture also okay so that we can measure the uh, torque that we are applying during the uh, uh, fastening of nut and bolt okay so this gives me the value of the bolt fastening torque okay is it a torque sensing device okay having capacity of thousand uh, sorry 100 kg meter okay and we have applied you can see bolt fastening torque 10 15 and 20 newton meter huh. then as i have mentioned we have evaluated the performance of this joint uh, uh, by uh, uh, measuring the tensile failure load and compressive failure load and how different parameters are affecting the tensile failure load and compressive failure load so here it is presented so basically when i increase the e by d ratio and w by d ratio both the tensile failure load increases because with increasing these two parameters my overlapping area is increasing okay so more overlapping area means uh, you know uh, there will be a, a more distribution of the load in the joining area okay that means my uh, area more area can take more amount of load okay more if the overlapping area is more 
it you can take more amount of load so that's why my tensional failure load and compressive failure load both are increasing with increasing the e by d and w by d okay and this is the load versus displacement graphs so here you can see uh, this is specimen without joint so having the maximum tensile load of 4394 newton 4394 newton okay but for the joint specimen it is uh, you know almost 50 percent reduction in the uh, tensile failure load tensile load okay so 2055 newton 2368 newton 2575 newton okay so these three uh, graphs for the three bolt fastening torque of 10 newton meter 15 newton meter and 20 newton meter and what we have observed that if I increase the bolt fastening torque, okay, it gives me the better joint strength in terms of uh, you know uh, maximum tensile failure load. Okay, so uh, by increasing the uh, you know bolt fastening torque, you can improve the you know joint strength or joint efficiency. And same similar observation we have observed for the compressive failure load also. Okay, for more bolt fastening torque, you have the more compressive failure load okay so this is the analysis that we have done and finally we have analyzed the failure of this uh, joint specimen so we have observed different types of failure under tensile loading as well as compression loading so under tensile loading you can see uh, there are different modes of failure like uh, failure due to the initiation of the crack at the whole edge and failure at the whole edge and failure at the outer edge of the bowl head so this type of failure observed when the bolt fastening torque is maximum that is 20 newton meter okay so failure occurred at the outer edge of the hole you can see okay not in the hole but in other at the low bolt fastening torque uh, the failure occurs uh, in the hole okay but at higher fastening torque uh, the failure occurs at the outer edge of the hole okay that, that's why it's giving me the best result in terms of maximum failure load but in case of compression failure load, you can see under compression testing, okay, uh, the specimen fail in a different way. There will be a fiber matrix splitting or pushing of the plies by the bolt head. Okay, so different modes of failure we have observed under tensile and compression loading. So this is one technique that we have applied, uh, mechanical joining. Second technique we have applied, uh, adhesive joining of green composites. Okay, so adhesive joining again, it is a very common technique. Okay and these mechanical and adhesive joining techniques they have their own advantages and limitations okay like adhesive joining techniques it is a, um, a permanent type of joining technique that means you cannot disassemble the component without damaging the components but in case of mechanical joining okay you can disassemble the component without damaging the components okay uh, but in case of mechanical joining the, uh, the disadvantage is that there is a weight penalty uh, uh, to the structure because you are using nut and bolt mechanical fastener okay so there will be some weight penalty but in case of adhesive joining that weight penalty is very negligible because you are using uh, uh, some kind of uh, you know adhesives for the purpose of joining okay so they have their own advantages and limitations so again uh, we have performed these techniques Okay, in order to investigate the joining behavior, adhesive joining behavior of green composites materials. So we have considered three parameters like width of the specimen, again overlapping length and types of the bonding materials. Overlap, width of the specimen already I have mentioned what is this parameter. Overlapping length is also mentioned what are the parameter. So this is the overlapping length. We have varied this overlapping length and here we have used three different types of bonding materials which is epoxy which is a very good bonding material used for this type of adhesive joining then PLA which is my parent material okay because my composite is made up of uh, bamboo fiber and PLA so we have used PLA film uh, for uh, for making the joints okay then again polyurethane adhesive which is again uh, uh, widely used adhesive for the purpose of adhesive joining okay so this is the again typical joint configuration you can see uh, again single lab joint we have created okay same configuration but here instead of nut and bolt uh, this overlapping area you can see at the interface of these two specimen okay uh, we have applied adhesive 
and this adhesive so you can see uh, we have maintained a gap also adhesive thickness of 0.6 millimeter okay and this uh, once the adhesive get cured okay you have this type of adhesive joint hmm. so these are the characteristics of the three different types of adhesives we have considered okay and as i have mentioned this adhesive joint they have their uh, uh, some advantages like reduction of the additional weight unlike uh, mechanical joining corrosion resistance sealing and damping action okay then uniform stress distribution okay because there you are not creating any hole so there will be no stress concentration so uh, uh, in the overlapping area but in case of adhesive joining there will be uniform stress distribution because there is no hole okay so again we have done the similar type of analysis okay we have measured the uh, uh, what is called uh, tensile failure load and compressive failure load and we have investigated how the different parameters affecting this tensile failure load and compressive failure load and what are the different modes of failure okay all these things we have investigated so this is again i will not discuss all these things okay this is the parametric investigation that we have performed uh, again load versus displacement graphs similar type of analysis okay you can see how uh, different types of adhesive affecting the uh, joint strength or the tensile and compressive failure load okay so basically what we have observed this epoxy epoxy adhesive gives me the you know better results in terms of tensile and compressive failure load out of three uh, bonding materials we have considered okay so this is the stress versus strength diagram and finally these are the different modes of damages so here we have the different types of damage so mostly we have observed uh, adhesive and cohesive failure and in some cases we have observed structural failure also okay so these are the different modes of failure with respect to different parameters then this is the third technique that we have applied which is called the hybrid joining technique just give me a moment Let me plug the charger. Plug in the charger. Battery is dies down. I hope there was no connectivity issue in between, right? My voice was clear to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, so uh, so uh, now I will just briefly explain the processes. Okay, uh, so this is the third process that we have applied, which is a hybrid joining technique. So, so by the name you can understand. So this is a hybrid process. So basically, this is a combination of both this uh, mechanical as well as adhesive joining. One second. Okay, so basically we have combined uh, both the techniques so that we can take the advantage of these individual techniques. Okay, so same types of joint we have created. Uh, so you can see this is the specimen, composite specimen. This is the joint configuration. Again, single lap joint we have created. Okay, first we have uh, you applied adhesive so that we can create the adhesive joint. Then once the adhesive get cured, we have created a hole and then finally we have installed this nut and bolt okay so that we can create the mechanical joint so now i have both adhesive as well as the mechanical joint in this configuration okay so what are the uh, input parameters we have considered width of the specimen again same parameters overlapping length and types of the bonding material similar types of bonding materials we have used here epoxy pla and polyurethane and again uh, similar type of analysis we have performed, like we have performed the tensile failure load and compressive failure load. We have 
uh, what is called uh, studied the effect of different parameters like uh, width of the specimen overlapping length and types of bonding material okay how these parameters affecting the uh, joint performance okay and finally we have uh, studied the failure of the joint specimen okay what are the different modes of failure so i will not discuss it again i am just giving you a very brief idea about all the processes okay so similar type of analysis you can see the same uh, load versus displacement curves okay with respect to different parameters and the failure of the specimen with respect to different parameters now this is another technique uh, that we have uh, developed our own setup which is called resistance welding setup okay so this resistance welding it is a basically you know uh, fusion bonding technique okay we have developed our own setup and, and finally retrofitted this setup with the universal testing machine because in this process i need to apply certain amount of pressure okay so in order to apply the required amount of pressure uh, we had retrofitted this setup with the universal testing machine okay so you can see the, the different connections okay so what is this resistance welding basically it it is a uh, it is a you know ohmic heating process okay so what happened basically uh, at the joint interface uh, you keep a heating element okay it has to be electrically conductive and that heating element has to be electric electrically conductive yeah. so what happened now if you apply voltage in this heating element so it will heat up okay in this conductive element it will heat up because it has some resistivity okay so any conductive uh, material you can consider okay and it will have some resistivity so when you, once you apply voltage okay it will heat up okay and it will you know uh, heat up the surrounding polymers okay surrounding material the heating element okay and due to that uh, heating process okay there will be a heating of the polymer or polymer may melt also okay uh, if the temperature generation is uh, quite enough and due to the melting of the uh, polymer once you apply the pressure there will be a you know uh, consideration of the polymer or you can create the bond between the two composite specimen okay so this basically obeys the joules heat loss and you can calculate the energy loss by using this formula uh, uh, there will be a localized heating because uh, in uh, the heating element will heat up okay and there will be a localized heating to the polymer and it is a time saving process okay it takes hardly few few uh, uh, seconds to few minutes to prepare the joint then eliminate surface preparation okay because uh, if you see for mechanical and adhesive uh, specifically talking uh, this adhesive for adhesive joining okay uh, surface preparation is very important I have not, though I have not discussed uh, I, I, uh, this part surface preparation, but for adhesive joining, surface preparation is very important. Okay. Uh, but in case of this resistance welding process, you no need to prepare the surfaces. Then minimum bonding defects because you are not creating any holes, you are not applying any, uh, you know, adhesives. Okay. So the defect that will be, uh, that will, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you do the testing and the defects you will observe that will be different types of defects and that type and you will observe the minimum defects when you will compare with the mechanical and adhesive joint then minimum stress concentration stress concentration is also minimum because you are not creating any hole okay so this is the setup that we have developed and we have considered uh, different parameters here and one of the important parameters we have considered is the heating elements so we have considered three different heating elements here. This is the stainless steel mesh, SS mesh, carbon fiber fabric, and polypyrrole. So both are electrically conductive, and it has to be electrically conductive. Okay. So stainless steel mesh, which is uh, easily available, then carbon fiber fabric, we have used as a heating element, and polypyrrole. Polypyrrole is it is a conductive polymer. Okay. So it is available in powder form. First, we have created a poly, poly, uh, this uh, polypyrrol film, and then we have used that polypyrrol film as a heating element. Now you can see the corresponding value of resistivity and conductivity. So stainless steel mesh, it is having the highest conductivity among all the three heating elements. Okay, carbon fiber fabric 
having the conductivity, uh, moderate level of conductivity and polypyrrole. Though it is a uh, uh, conductive polymer, but you can see the conductivity value, it is very low. Okay. So by using these heating elements, we have covered the, you know, uh, overlapping area. Okay. In different percentage, we have, in here we have covered the whole overlapping area. That means 100% area is covered by this heating element. So you can see here, the whole overlapping area is covered by the heating element. Here, only 60% area covered by the heating, uh, heating element. Sorry, not 60, 65%. And here only 35% of the overlapping area is covered by the heating element. Because we wanted to investigate whether we need to cover the whole area by this heating element or not. Okay, because this heating element, this is a different material. Okay, and it become the integral part of this uh, uh, joint. Okay, because we cannot remove this uh, heating element after the, once you uh, perform the joining operation. Okay, it becomes the integral part of the specimen. So we wanted to investigate whether we need to cover the whole overlapping area by this heating element or not. And what we have observed that if you don't cover the whole overlapping area by this heating element, also we will get the required amount of joining strength. Okay. And other uh, uh, this uh, parameter we have considered is the heating time. Okay, which is 30 seconds, 60 seconds and 90 seconds. So you can see these are the three uh, parameters, types of heating elements, area covered by the heating elements and heating time. Okay, uh, so heating time also you can see 30, 60 and 90 seconds. So it is not a very lengthy process. Okay, the process is quite fast and you can use uh, efficiently use this process for joining of, of this polymeric materials. But one limitation is that you cannot apply this technique for joining of thermosetting composite because it will not melt upon heating. Okay, already I have discussed the characteristics of thermosetting polymer. Okay, so this process is only applicable to the thermoplastic based composite materials. Okay, but the other two process, other three processes I have discussed so far like mechanical joining, then adhesive joining, then hybrid joining, all these three processes you can apply to any types of composite materials independent of the uh, polymeric material you are using to develop the composite material okay you can use it for thermosetting composite you can use it for thermoplastic composite also but this process is only applicable to thermoplastic based composite materials and these are the joint you can see that we have created okay i will not go, go into much details of it so same types of joint configuration like a single lab joint okay sorry Oh, single lab joint so here in this portion you can see instead of adhesive we have applied this heating element okay so this is the polypyrrole heating element this is the carbon fiber fabric that we have used as heating element and this is the stainless steel mesh so three different types of joints by using three different types of heating elements and finally similar type of uh, testing we have done that is we have done the tensile and as well as compressive testing in order to uh, calculate the in order to measure the tensile failure load and the compressive failure load okay so similar type of and uh, also investigated how the different parameters affecting the joint strength so i i will not discuss all the results again okay again load versus displacement graphs you can see and, and the different modes of failure so here the modes of failures are different it may be intralaminar failure, it may be interfacial failure, or it may be coupon failure. Okay, so here you can see due to excessive heating, okay, some sort of damage also you can see at the joint interface due to more heating. Okay, because when you will apply vol more voltage, okay, there will be more heating. And at certain condition, if the temperature is very high, it may burn the fiber and polymer also. Okay, so you need to optimize these uh, uh, different parameters so that you can create. Uh, good quality joint in these materials so this is the another process that i have discussed now uh, this is actually related to not composite material this is related to uh, polymer only biodegradable polymer friction steel welding process which is a very common technique in automotive automotive industry uh, so this is done by one of my btech students and the work has been published in the sci in an sci journal uh, 
so as this is not related to green composite materials so i will not discuss this uh, this process uh, so this is the last process that i am going to discuss so this is a high frequency ultrasonic vibration welding process and this process we have again applied for joining of green composite materials so what is this process basically you can see this is the uh, typical setup uh, experimental setup so here we have a cylindrical horn which will vibrate ultrasonically okay at very high frequency it is uh, 20 kilohertz okay at very high frequency it will vibrate and there is a some kind of chicken fixture you can see where you can keep your specimen okay for the purpose of joining okay so it's a special attachment okay so it is a basically solid state fusion bonding technique it is a fusion bonding technique like resistance welding it is also a fusion bonding technique it is eco-friendly cost effective and time savings methods okay you are not using any adhesive mechanical fastener okay so that's why it's eco-friendly and cost effective and also a time saving methods i'll show you that it takes only few milliseconds to create the joint okay so a few milliseconds only to create the joint and you can have a you know very good uh, performance of the joint uh, when you compare with the other techniques so it is a very fast process then low amplitude and high frequency vibration is produced at the joint interface so i have these uh, two specimen overlapping each other and this overlapping area this is the overlapping area right this is the overlapping area this overlapping area is under this horn okay this cylindrical horn okay which vibrates ultrasonically at very high frequency okay so what will happen when it will vibrate ultrasonic at ultrasonic frequency at the joint interface there will be excessive heating okay there will be viscoelastic heating due to the friction okay because it is hybrid vibrating at high frequency okay due to the surface friction there will be a viscoelastic heating and due to that heating the polymer will melt and you apply pressure you will get the joint okay so this is how this process can be used for the joining of this type of uh, composite materials again this fusion bonding techniques this uh, uh, resistance welding as well as this high frequency ultrasonic vibration welding techniques these are not applicable to thermosetting based composite materials these are applicable to only thermoplastic based composite materials where polymer will melt and create the bonding okay in order to create the joint okay so similar type of joint like single lab joint we have created and here we have considered three parameters like welding pressure holding time and welding time so these are all machine parameters okay so so you can see we have considered five different levels of welding pressure holding time and welding time okay all these parameters are very important because if these parameters say for example if welding pressure is very high what happens you, your uh, uh, horn is vibrating okay so at the joint interface temperature will generate it will melt the polymer now after that you have to apply pressure okay which is called the welding pressure okay that means the horn will apply pressure okay it will stop vibrating and it will it will apply the pressure okay and if this pressure is very high and very low it will have detrimental effect on the joint strength because if it is very high my uh, melted polymer will squeeze out from the overlapping area and if it is very low there will be no adequate bonding between the two specimens okay so that's why it is it should not be very high it should not be very low holding time higher is the better okay if it is uh, uh, you can see here 9000 millisecond okay which is maximum here it gives me the maximum joint strength because holding time is the time uh, you are giving for the consolidation purpose for the solidification of the melted polymer okay that means you are keeping the specimen okay under pressure for more period of time so it it will allow you uh, the specimen uh, for better joining okay and welding time that means the time you are giving for the vibration of the ultrasonic horn uh, this horn cylindrical horn okay again it should not be very high and it should not be very low because if the horn vibrates for more more time it will create more uh, there will be more heating at the joint interface okay that means there will be excessive heat, uh, heating of the polymer excessive melting of the polymer but if welding time is low that means 
there may not be adequate amount of heat generation and due, due to that there may not be adequate amount of melting of the polymer okay so very high and very low level of welding time will detrimentally affect the joint strength okay so all these parameters we have investigated and we have uh, done the tensile testing of the joint specimen so again this is with respect to different parameters how different parameters affecting the joint strength as i have mentioned that welding time uh, it should not be very high it should not be very low see at very high welding time and very low welding times it is not giving me the adequate amount of strength okay the tensile failure rate is you can see it is not very high but at moderate level of welding time i am getting the maximum field load similarly welding pressure i have mentioned it should not be very low it should not be very high at moderate level it is giving me the maximum field load but holding time higher is the better so that's why you can see at higher value of holding time it gives me the maximum amount of tensile field load. and these are again this load versus displacement graphs okay comparison of the different parameters and this is the you can see uh, the joint okay so if you see mostly we have observed this uh, structural failure of the joint that means at the overlapping area we have not seen any failure of the joint okay so this is the overlapping area the failure of the specimen occurred outside this overlapping area okay which is called the structural failure my joint is not failing but my specimen is failing so i can say that my joint is having the adequate strength okay as i am applying load but still the joint is not failing but my specimen is failing so that's why it is giving me the better joining strength okay it is giving me the better joining strength okay and these are the some uh, as i have mentioned i mentioned that uh, at different uh, levels of this uh, uh, you know welding time and hold, holding time okay so if my welding time is more so there will be more melting of the polymer and it will squeeze out squeeze out from the you know welding area or the overlapping area so you can see some polymers okay melted polymer it squeezed out okay and also we have all the distortion of the fiber okay because polymer melts melts so its viscosity will reduce once it get melted okay and due to that uh, there will be a, when you are applying pressure uh, for the bonding purpose um, uh, due to that pressure there will be there may be some displacement of the fiber orientation okay so this is how the different parameters affecting the joint strength so this is the last process i have discussed maybe i would like to now end my presentation here so i have given an idea about the both the machining and joining processes in context of green composite materials and specifically in the in this two area you can contribute a lot because these are not exposed uh, much this area you can work a lot okay you can I have given you an idea you, uh, of the different processes. You can apply these processes because we have not done very thorough investigation using these processes. We have just applied uh, these processes to study or to check the feasibility of these processes in the context of green composite material. So there are many aspects of these processes. There are many parameters of these processes that you can uh, explore in order to further improve the joining performance of these green composite materials okay so with this uh, live i'd like to end my session thank you all thank you very much for your patience listening now if you have any questions please feel free to discuss with me if you have any question any queries you can ask me through the chat box or you can directly ask me. Uh, thank you so much sir uh, dear participant if any uh, question related to the sir topic please ask So any questions, you can write to the chat box also if you have any question. Uh, good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. Very good morning. Sir, thank you so much, sir. Very informative lecture, sir. I have gained uh, very depth knowledge in welding of green composites. So <coughs> thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So, so if there are no questions, maybe we can end the session here. If you have any questions, you can write and mail to me also. No, uh, you can have my email ID and you can write an email to, to me if you have any questions.
I think there is a uh, participant have no question. Okay. So, so we wind up the, the this technical session, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you all uh, so for your patience listening and thank you for giving me an opportunity uh, to uh, uh, to present our work. Okay, in this platform, uh, I wish you a very you know uh, 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 safe and you know healthy life in this pandemic situation okay thank you all for your patience listening okay so abhishek please abhishek uh, so wind up the session abhishek thanks thank you sir thank you for taking out the time okay. from your busy schedule to provide us the valuable information and give the information about the approach to the research field sir on behalf of all the coordinators myself and the participant i would like to thank you for your time and the lecture thank you sir Okay, okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Very interesting session. Nice interaction. So, thank you, sir. So, uh, dear participant, after uh, the, our second technical, uh, our second techn technical session uh, is taken by the Dr. Gaurav Divedi, sir. Uh, he is joined soon. So please wait for some minute. Good morning, sir. Sir, please morning. give the link for the feedback, sir. Uh, okay, sir. I think, I think it's available in the chat box, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Again, I pasted on the feedback form. In chat box uh, good morning respected sabin sir good morning Santosh ji. sir uh, uh, how was your uh, uh, tavi sir uh, fine Santosh. little bit fine. improvement in my health okay so we we are blessing that uh, uh, you feel much better okay on that Hello. Uh, every participant, yes, we take uh, ten minutes breaks because uh, the time of second uh, uh, technical session is twelve uh, p.m. So better to we take ten minute break. Break. We after eleven fifty-five, we, we will we meet in this platform. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir.